Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. Guess what? It is your lucky day and I'm not kidding. I'm going to share with you my fish breading recipe and I haven't shared it with very many people. I've been making this for about 30 years and I've literally fed thousands of people fish with this and people rave about it. I've been told so many times that I should market and sell this and everything like that, but I just don't have any interest in that. Plus, it's got some commercial products right in it. I don't know what the legalities of even doing that would be. But I'm not kidding you. You are going to love this fish breading recipe. I don't, honestly don't remember where uh, the final recipe actually came from or when. It was just basically uh, an experimental through the years. I kind of took a couple things out, added a couple things in and so forth. And this is what I've arrived at. And it is terrific so let's just get started I'll show you what I put in it and then I'll talk a little bit about uh, how to fry the fish in it as well so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add two uh, uh, one cup of flour and one cup of cornmeal and uh, I do not measure this when I when I normally make it so I'm just kind of estimating for this video to help you make sure you get the right proportions. Okay, there's a cup of flour and a cup of cornmeal. And then we're gonna add a couple cups, two to three cups of grated Parmesan cheese. One, two, actually that's just perfect. There's about two and a quarter cups right there. Perfect, okay. Um, now we're going to mix that up together and this grated Parmesan cheese is kind of the secret ingredient here and it, sometimes it's kind of um, clumpy so I just kind of you know smash the clumps down a little bit but uh, when it gets browned on the on the fish fillets oh man is it good all right now we're going to add some garlic powder and uh, I think I'm going to take a look at this. I'm going to do about I'm going to do about a, a little little over a tablespoon. That looks about right. And then I'm going to add some paprika. And you can tell I'm very serious about getting the exact right amounts right there. That's about a tablespoon or just a skosh over a tablespoon. Um, Okay, and then the last thing I'm going to add is Lowry season salt. And I'm going to do at least two tablespoons. We'll see how it looks to me. That's one. I'm going to do I'm going to do three tablespoons. Okay. That was about three tablespoons right there. This is such an exact science. Don't get this wrong. You will experiment a little bit as you make this. You will, uh, you know, kind of adjust these to what your tastes are. And what I'm making here is just about the right amount to fill up a gallon-sized Ziploc bag. Okay, and that'll do, you know, enough fish for a fairly large family or uh, you know group of friends and still have a little bit left over um, you know I feed uh, take a group of guys to Canada fishing every year and we'll have 14 to 17 guys and they can really eat and it takes about two bags of this to fry enough fish for all those guys when you're camped outdoors and on an island people can Especially guys, when you're when you're camped outdoors, man, they can eat a lot. So um, that's that gives kind of gives you an idea of, about how much this will do. Okay, so the fish breading is good to go here, and boy, it smells good. So let's uh, let's move on to uh, doing some walleyes. Okay, there are several different ways you can use this breading. One of the ways I typically use it is just to just pat the the breading onto the fish fillets it's a really good way to do it it works best if the fish fillets are wet so they collect and attach the breading well um, you can actually add milk to the breading and stir it up into a batter if you like a lot of 
thick breading on your fish. Another way to get thick breading on your fish would be to um, use a milk and egg dredge where you would just you dip a fillet in flour then you dip it in a combination of milk and egg and then you dredge it in through the batter and pat the batter on it you get a lot thicker um, coating of this batter or breading on the fish if you do it that way the way I'm doing it right now is probably my favorite way to do it and I've just cut these walleye fillets up into chunks this is just four fillets for my wife and I for dinner um, they're you know walleyes that were probably 15 to 16 17 inches or whatever and uh, four of those is about right for my wife and I for dinner so that's the way I'm going to do it I'm going to rinse them off and get them wet then I'll shake them in the bag uh, with the breading and then I'll just drop them in the hot oil the oil should be at about 375 that's kind of your sweet spot 350 to 400 is okay um, but that 375 is really the sweet spot of where it works the best when they're golden brown and floating that's when they're done I hope you try this because I really believe it'll be some of the best fish you've ever had in your life and it doesn't matter what species of fish we use this for northern pike and uh, perch and uh, several I've used this on lake trout which it's actually really good on lake trout so I really hope you'll try it I'll leave the full um, recipe in the description below also please hit the thumbs up button if you would and hit the subscribe button we'd sure like to have you as a subscriber and if you would like to if you try this and you like it just leave a comment in the comment section below and let us know how you liked it and also if there's something that you would add to it or take away from it leave that in the comment section below too so thanks for being a part of this channel, and I am going to eat some fish.